Welcome to our class on cell division. I'd like to tell you about cell division very briefly. There are many other things I'll be leaving out just to save time and um, to try to be brief. Only the relevant things to be said. Now, cell division, the process of a cell dividing. First, what are the types of cells we have? We have what we call somatic cells or body cells. We have the germ cells and we have the sex cells, three types. The sex cells are also called gametes. And we only find gametes in the gonads. What do I mean by gonads? The testes in males and the ovaries in females. Which means that the sex cells are the sperm in a man and the eggs in a woman. Now for the somatic cells, they are all the other cells in the body apart from the sex cells. And of course the germ cells. But which ones are germ cells? Germ cells are also found in the gonads. And they are the ones that produce the gametes. Which means gametes in themselves come from previously existing cells called germ cells. So it means that germ cells and gametes are restricted to where now? The gonads. And then everywhere else, what you find is the somatic cells. Now, having mentioned those three types of cells, there are two main types of cell divisions and we we'll call them meiosis and mitosis. Now, this meiosis, or more correctly, meiosis, occurs in this group of cells, germ cells. So germ cells are the ones that occur meiosis to produce sex cells. Then somatic cells are the ones that undergo mitosis to produce other somatic cells. Which means sex cells do not undergo any type of division. So these are the two types of division and these are the guys that undergo the somatic form mitosis to produce more somatics germ cells undergo meiosis to produce gametes. Now, each of these processes, that is meiosis and mitosis, have four main stages. Those four main stages are called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Sometimes we begin to divide those four stages into two each, as in early prophase, late prophase, early metaphase, and so on. But that's not necessary for now because we're trying to keep this simple. And then again, meiosis involves two divisions. What that means is if a germ cell is to undergo meiosis, it's undergo prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, then the initial products will also undergo prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase again to give us the final products. And that means when we describe meiosis, you'll be hearing things like prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. Then those products will undergo prophase two, metaphase two, and so on. But in the case of mitosis, they all occur just once. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, final products. That's one important thing about the two of them. Now I'll tell you how to identify those four stages in diagrams, but first, what are the differences between meiosis and mitosis? They're on the board. First, parents versus offspring. Do they resemble each other? In meiosis, the parents and the offspring are different. That means there's some variation between them. But in mitosis, they're exactly the same. Then what about in terms of the number of offspring? For meiosis or meiosis, one parent produces four daughters, usually, usually. Then for mitosis, one parent produces two daughters. The offspring, the daughter cells, are usually two. Then in terms of number of chromosomes, for meiosis, the offspring have half the number of chromosomes that the parents have. But in mitosis, the offspring have the same number of chromosomes as the parents. So in terms of number of chromosomes, meiosis, parents, offspring, double, half. Mitosis, parents, offspring, equal numbers of chromosomes. The number of divisions. In meiosis, there are two divisions, the first meiotic division and the second meiotic division, which I told you about before as prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, occurring twice. Then, um, in mitosis, there are just, okay, there's just one division, PMAT, once, all right? Then crossing over, crossing over occurs in meiosis, but not in mitosis. 
has to do with um, homologous chromosomes coming close together and then crossing over like that so that um, they exchange genetic materials. As a matter of fact, it is part of the reason the parents are different from the offspring in meiosis. So parent not be, um, being like the offspring in meiosis is partly due to this uh, phenomenon called crossing over. Then the cell type, when we say cell type, I already mentioned that before, what types of cells undergo these two cell divisions? For meiosis, we said it is the germ cell, then for mitosis, it is the somatic cell. Now, crossing over to this side, what do these diagrams represent? What stages of meiosis or mitosis do we have represented in these diagrams? Now, for this first diagram, it is quite different from the others because these things you are seeing, like threads, those threads are actually called spindles. And those spindles are formed by what we refer to as centrioles. If you have watched my video on um, cells, the second video on cells, where I talked about functions of the parts of the cell, I talked about the centrioles as the ones that form the spindles. So these spindles, you see that they are not there, or they are just beginning to form. See them here? So we say that in this case, you have what we call prophase. Prophase does not look like the others. It doesn't have spindles like this. In fact, some diagrams on prophase do not have these short spindles you are seeing here. That would be early prophase. But this is late prophase. But most importantly, any time you want to identify prophase, see what you use. This, the nuclear membrane. As long as the nuclear membrane is still there, you know it is prophase because the degeneration of this nuclear membrane marks the end of prophase, all right? So for the rest here, no nuclear membrane. How do we identify them? Very easy. Looking at this spindle, this part of the spindle, we call it the pole. Then this part is called the equator. So pole, equator, pole. Metaphase, anaphase, telophase, to differentiate them, see what we have. For metaphase, the chromosomes are where? At the equator. Anaphase, or before anaphase, telophase, where are the chromosomes? They are already at the poles. Then anaphase, in between, they are not at the equator, neither are they at the poles, because actually anaphase is the state of cell division where the chromosomes leave the equator and move toward the poles, all right? So when they are at the equator, you have metaphase. When they are at the poles, you have telophase. And then when they are in between, you have what we call anaphase. So those are the four stages of cell division. Having heard about the four stages, there are three terms I would like us to um, describe briefly. I'll put them on this side, just watch them. Um, they are haploid N, diploid 2N, and interface. I'll tell you their meanings very briefly. Haploid, diploid, if you check their symbols, diploid means two of the haploid. Now, you remember we said there are three types of cells. We call them germ cells, somatic cells, and sex cells, right? The sex cells come from the germ cells. Somatic cells produce fellow somatic cells. Now, we say germ cells are diploid, somatic cells are diploid, but sex cells are haploid. What does that mean? It means that the number of chromosomes in a germ cell is the same as in a somatic cell, but a sex cell contains half of that number. That's the relationship between them. And as you go from one organism to another, the numbers keep changing. For example, in man, if you pick a germ cell, you'll find 46 chromosomes in it. You pick a somatic cell, you'll find 46. But you pick a sex cell, you'll find 23. So if you look at the relationship, 46 divided by 2 is 23. You may pick another organism, let's say a cockroach. The number of chromosomes in a gamut of a cockroach will not necessarily be 23. It could be 20. But of course, in that case, you will expect that a somatic cell in that cockroach should have 40 chromosomes. So the relationship is what we're interested in. 2N ratio N, all right? The numbers are usually not constant. The numbers will vary from one person to another. So imagine these two questions, and here there are different answers. The first one, how many chromosomes are in a somatic cell? The answer is 2N. 
But if I say how many chromosomes are in the somatic cell of man, then the answer is 46, all right? So these are two different things. Bear that in mind. Interface, interface, inter is between phase, phases. So interface is the time period between cell divisions. That is, if one division A occurs, another division B occurs, the time period between those two occurrences is called interphase. So it's as though we are saying if one cell is going to divide now, it will divide through these four stages of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. After telophase, what happens? It will produce daughters. Those daughters, what will happen to them? They will also produce their own daughters. But before they produce their own daughters, they need to, in a sense, rest. That's why some call interface resting phase. So they will spend some time and then they will also undergo prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, produce their own daughters. Those daughters they have produced too will rest up a bit and then undergo the next division. So that period of rest in between is what we call interface. Somehow, if you want to understand this better, you may need to watch my video on sex, um, sorry, on sex cells, but on cell cycle. So the cell cycle video is a very short video. You may want to watch it so that um, you'll get a better idea of what interface is like. And please, when you watch that video related to this one, see how it connects to the process of mitosis. Thank you for watching.